for some reason, um, people like Stuart Hameroff, so neuroscientists, have uh, started to investigate the possibility that the microtubules within nerve cells, I think, are responsible through some quantum mechanical process right, yeah. for consciousness. So consciousness arises as an anomaly that you don't get in any other... Um, so you, you have a lump of, of matter that isn't conscious, but if you organise a lump of matter to have these particular wiggly geometries in, mm -hmm. then the quantum, I think it's something like this, the quantum waveforms associated with those, geomet with those physical geometries mm. um, are able to accomplish something uh, which would normally not happen. It's called quantum coherence. So uh, there's every particle is, has a, a, qu a quantum waveform associated with it. So any aggregate of particles, anything you make, any object, mm. uh, has, a, has a quantum waveform associated with it. Yeah. But once it gets beyond a certain size, that thing has a very, very short lifespan. It sort of collapses mm. very quickly. Um, and that's something, I believe that's unrelated to what gets called the collapse of the wave function, which comes into the mm. philosophy mm. of quantum mechanics and consciousness. Mm. So mm. that's all getting off onto another tangent. But anyway, very simply, this idea that, okay, every object, every physical object supports these different types of waveforms, but generally they, they, they're short-lived. But um, like if you hit an object and it makes a sound, but then the sound fades away very quickly. Whereas imagine a perfectly tuned bell that you hit and it just rang forever or mm. rang for very long periods of time. Something like that. The, you get these sort of standing waves. These quantum waves associated with microtubules, it's being hypothesized, could remain long enough for quantum computation to occur. So the idea is that the brain is exploiting quantum computation. So it's kind of a computer, but it's a quantum computer. Mm. And quantum computation is a real sort of fast-moving topic right now in computer science. There's people building quantum computers, very simple ones. Mm. But they would allow this kind of massively parallel computation, which would completely revolutionize yeah. computer technology and, and the world as we know it, I believe. Um, so Hameroff and supported by Roger Penrose, the physicist, he, who's, who's very much, um, I believe, still behind these, uh, these speculations. They're suggesting that um, uh, this unique state of affairs that surrounds the quantum mechanics of these things which have evolved in the nerve cells of certain higher mammals, I would guess, mm. uh, on Earth, as far as we know, that, you know, there may well be similar things going on in other parts of the universe, but the universe we're aware of, the only place you'll find this quantum mechanical phenomenon mm. are in the nervous systems of certain higher being, higher organisms. And also what you seemingly find in those organisms that you don't find any, seemingly anywhere else in the mm. world is consciousness. So it's this, hence the idea that consciousness has got something to do with this quantum, what, um, it's quantum back action, I believe it was called by a uh, not particularly reputable physicist called Jack Sarfati. Uh, who, who originally got me interested in this stuff. Mm. He calls himself a theatrical physicist <laughs> and claims that the mad scientist in Back to the Future was modelled after him <laughs> because he's a friend of the... Who, who made those Back to the Future films? George Lucas. I, okay. No, wait, no, sorry. I'm, I'm, no, I don't know. Anyway, one of those big names. He, he's, a, he's a California, yeah. you know, kind of larger-than-life character that yeah. hangs out with that yeah. kind of crowd. Yeah. But he also, you know, <laughs> talk, he's a, he talks a lot about consciousness and, and, and uh, fundamental physics. And he kind of grabbed Hameroff's ideas and ran with them in quite a sort of, you know, um, not less, perhaps less than scholarly way. Yeah. And pushed this idea of quantum back action. Yeah. And he was pushing, this is now we're getting into, into just bizarre storytelling, but mm. I'm going to finish the story because it's yeah. a good one. Um, he was pushing for the idea of, well, okay, if consciousness is um, simply uh, the result of certain physical architectures emerging, then um, you know, having evolved through, you know, possibly through evolutionary uh, forces, yeah. you know, because consciousness is a beneficial yeah. um, thing from a survival point of view. So these, these wiggly structures show up as an innovation, um, but they don't show up anywhere else in the, in the physical world. But there's nothing to stop us with our nanotechnology when it comes on online to building um, from building little silicon or in whatever whatever um, yeah. substance. But basically building microtubules yeah. and building what he was calling conscious computer chips and this was in the 90s when the internet was kicking off and he was like doing an early form of like sort of 
crowdfunding or trying to, I think. Wow. It's like trying to get investment. Like, come on, we need to build some conscious computer chips. <laughs> and it all seems very wacky now. It seems like some sort of film that I was watching. Yeah. But this, there was, this was all going on in the, in the late 90s, or mid to late 90s. And I was actually in, in contact with Salfati at one point because I was interested in reverse time causality at that point. And he claimed, and this is the, this is the, the weirdest bit, that um, uh, he claims that as a child growing up in Brooklyn, mm. the phone rang one day, in the fifth, I think in the 50s this would be, and uh, the phone rang and he picked up the phone, there's maybe nobody else at home, and a robotic voice told him that it was a computer <laughs> on a spaceship or orbiting the Earth in the future, <laughs> oh, wow. And it was talking to him backwards through time, and he had to become a physicist in order to manifest the necessary theory for this thing to come into being. So it was some kind of weird Doctor Who time loop type story. So he, and he, he was seriously claiming that he got this phone call. Probably he would be prepared to admit that it could have been one of his friends winding him up. Yeah. But he became a physicist, you know, well, some people might argue not a particularly <laughs> yeah. credible one, but he sort of takes ideas and puts them together in an interesting way. I don't know if he's still around. I've not checked in with Jack Salfati for many years. But um, I know he was he was very, um, he, rather less than um, polite with, with Stuart Hammeroff when Hammeroff <laughs> attempted to correct him on certain points about his, <laughs> the work that he was actually doing and publishing. Anyway, yeah. without getting into the, um, into the uh, pol politics of that, yeah. this idea of a future conscious being <laughs> Yeah. Being able to send messages backwards through time to uh, it bring itself into being um, is one of the strangest stories I've ever heard. And it, it yeah, was, that, that is a good one. Um, but the, the actual manufacturing of the conscious microtubules, uh, I don't believe anybody's um, working on that at the moment. But mm. Well, I mean, um, it's, you know, Roger Penrose is, you know, extremely well-respected um, mm. author, and he, he certainly put his weight behind that notion that there must be some kind of uh, quantum element to what's going on with consciousness. Yeah, I think there's a basically there's a there is a, a sub group within neurophilosophy or this interdisciplinary, yeah. interdisciplinary study of consciousness, yeah. which wants to find the physical roots. So it's kind of like the new pineal gland, isn't it? It's like, yeah. Where where is it? Come on, we want to find it. Yeah. And so these it's distributed. The idea being, it's not yeah. in one part of the brain. It's in every single cell. Maybe yes. it's the whole body. Yeah. Because um, some people would say, why? How can you? You know, the nervous, the brain, and the nervous system aren't separate things. It's yeah. just one one continuous thing, and the nervous yeah. system permeates through the whole body. Absolutely. And and I, I mean, I think one one problem I have with this is is perhaps exactly that that it it sort of extends um, consciousness too far, or or perhaps it makes it. So, for example, suppose you have. You, you locate consciousness with the microtubules. If you have like one tiny bit of brain matter that has these microtubules, that's not even connected, but it's still, um, you know, the cells are still alive. Mm. Does that make that conscious? No, because I think they see consciousness as, as something that's arising through a network of these things working together as a kind of quantum computer. Okay. Something like well, that. that. I, I think, mean, I'm not, I can't answer for it's them. Not, that's, I mean, I don't think Dennett would necessarily dispute that. In it, it's still um, material. It's just yeah. It, it doesn't um, really contradict Dennett, no, does it? No, no. Um, it's it's a materialist reductionist view. I mean, would Dennett call himself a reductionist? Yeah. Okay. I think so. And I've you know, I've been taking a very anti-reductionist stance throughout the Reality Report, as regular viewers will know. Um, but I'm not, you know. I'm, I'm prepared. To, I wouldn't want to debate Dennett, basically. If I invited him on, yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Good. Yeah, yeah, I'd, yeah, if he's watching, and sorry for probably... Well, I think Mark's doing a great job of representing <laughs> your views, but anything I may have said um, may have completely missed the point. Um, but uh, the word... I learned a word the other day. I think we'll have to sign off in a moment now. The battery's just about to go. But uh, compatibilist. Can't compatibilist? Compatibilist, yeah. yeah. He, he was, um, yeah, my friend Juliet, who was on the series before this one, taught me the word yesterday, I think. Um, mm. That uh, I think her father was to take, he, her father takes an interest in for this, these questions of yeah. free will. Yeah. He's a Christian who's fascinated by uh, the, the Trinity, some of those, those yeah. quite seemingly outdated philosophical and theological conundrums about the Trinity. Yeah. 
he puzzles over these things yeah. and the idea of free will and this idea of compatibilism mm. is where you're able to believe you, you basically don't see a contradiction between the world being deterministic or mechanistic and mm. you having free will that the idea yeah. that it has to be one or the other is a misunderstanding absolutely and yeah. so Dennett is in the compatibilist camp 100% which I think that, is great that much that, that, I think on that front I feel really um, yeah you know I, so I'm not even though I'm an anti-reductionist idealist idealist in the philosophical sense yeah. that is of believing that matter is just a kind of extension of mind so in some ways I'm very opposed to Dennett in the stance that I'm taking at the moment I, it, which is always changing but I can definitely see eye to eye in that I've always felt that this problem that people feel there is about free will is a misunderstanding yeah and actually that it could be somehow could be both absolutely um, yeah we, we are located within that causal mm. network and that's that's empowering that's what gives us the capacity to actually change stuff in the world right okay well i think maybe if we um we might want to do another episode or Perhaps, a series of yeah. episodes on free will yeah that would be good. everyone has a um an interest in that at some level yeah. that that you know i think everyone can relate to the questions yes. of free will yeah so I, I appreciate the way you can break some of this down into really accessible forms that people can relate to so thanks so much for being on the program thank you and, uh, and as usual we'll end with another moment of ecological wonderment <laughs>